Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, a few days ago, I uploaded a video showing that you shouldn't worry about the effects of 5-AR inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride on neurosteroid levels in the brain. The idea behind 5-AR inhibitors that has gotten the whole hair loss community worked up for nothing for the past decade or so is that theoretically, 5-AR inhibitors may block the synthesis of neurosteroids like allopregnanolone, which is a neurosteroid that can influence neuronal activity in the brain and therefore might influence behavior and mood. I showed in my last video that most of the data on neurosteroids is based on animal studies. Specifically, we're talking about data extracted from mice and rats. Many of the studies showing behavior effects on rodents tested the effects of the drug finasteride specifically. And the study I went over in detail showed that the rats developed some behaviors that were similar to depression after being given finasteride. For example, the rats gave up more easily when they were subjected to the medieval torture technique called the force swim test. So finasteride hating doctors on the PFS network's payroll like Dr. Earwig and Dr. Trash have used this kind of data to suggest that this kind of effect might cause depression in human users of finasteride as well. And they even use this kind of data to support their belief in the existence of the fake 4chan meme known as post-finasteride syndrome, even though there's nothing in any of these studies to suggest that these effects on neurosteroid levels would be permanent. So back in 2011, the FDA added depression to the list of possible side effects from finasteride based on just a few cases found in post-marketing surveys. Unfortunately, this spurred on a lot of lawsuits, and this move by the FDA is probably what triggered the whole concept of the delusional and litigation-driven post-finasteride syndrome. Anyways, in the last video, I pointed out the flaws of these animal studies, and the three basic flaws are as follows. Number one, much higher doses of finasteride were used in these studies than the normal human dosage. I'm talking about hundreds of times the normal dosage that a human would use for hair loss. Number two, there are interspecies differences in how finasteride works in humans versus rodents. In humans, finasteride is almost purely a blocker of the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme, with only weak effects on the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme. In rodents, on the other hand, finasteride is just as strong a type 1 isoenzyme blocker as a type 2 isoenzyme blocker, and this is important because of the third flaw of these studies, which is number three. The type one isoenzyme is the predominant enzyme in the brain. So whether you are human or a rat, it's the type 1 isoenzyme which is dominant. So since finasteride in rats blocks the type 1 isoenzyme, this will give you an exaggerated effect of finasteride <clears throat> which you wouldn't see in humans because finasteride has only a negligible effect on the type 1 isoenzyme in humans. In fact, compared to dutasteride, finasteride suppresses only 1 one hundredth the amount of what dutasteride would suppress for the 5-AR type 1 isoenzyme. So after hearing me say that, you might be tempted to ask me, but Kevin, doesn't that mean dutasteride is dangerous? It blocks the type 1 isoenzyme 100 times more than finasteride. Won't it mess up my neurosteroids, bro? Well, in theory, you might think that dutasteride would have more of an effect on neurosteroids, but in practice, this doesn't seem to be true. In fact, in 2011, the FDA also revised the labeling for dutasteride, but unlike with finasteride, they did not add depression as a potential side effect. In fact, despite what you read on all the terrible forums and subreddits out there dedicated to the subject of hair loss, there is in fact very, very little evidence that either dutasteride or finasteride increase the risk for depression. For example, in this meta-analysis published in 2019, the authors analyzed the data from five studies using either finasteride or dutasteride. The studies included the immense number of 209,940 patients and found a trend towards a slightly higher incidence of depression in the treatment group. However, this difference was not statistically significant, meaning it could have been just due to chance alone. Now, this is a huge number of patients, so the fact that these investigators found no statistical statistical difference in the incidence of depression between the treatment group and the control group means that if there is an association between 5-AR blockers and depression, it is a very, very weak one. So despite the fact that depression was added as a possible side effect for finasteride, based on the current research, I really do not think it was justified, and more than likely it was put there just to mitigate the risk of lawsuits from money-hungry organizations like the PFS Network. Also, like I said in my last video, a much, much bigger 
bigger cause of depression than five air blockers is going bald. And this isn't just my subjective opinion. In fact, there is hard objective data out there which demonstrates that going bald can ruin your entire life. And I made a video discussing that, which I'll link below in case you haven't seen it yet. The point though, is that considering how soul crushing hair loss really is, I am certain that if every bald person in the world took five air inhibitors like finasteride and nutasteride, then I am 100% certain that the number of cases of depression would go way, way down just because of how damn soul crushing and depressing hair loss really is. The idea that someone would avoid finasteride due to some infinitesimally small risk of depression when there is a 100% guarantee that going bald will absolutely make you depressed, it's downright ludicrous if you ask me. Like I said though, there's not much evidence that 5 air blockers cause enough changes in neurosteroids to cause mental health problems at all. In fact, there is much stronger evidence that 5 air blockers actually are good for your brain and they can actually promote mental longevity. Now, I can already anticipate someone writing in the comment section, but Kevin, if these drugs have any effect on the brain at all, does it that mean that they are affecting our neurosteroids? Well, no, this is not the case at all. In fact, as you will soon see with the studies we're about to look at, the neurological problems that often happen to us aren't due to neurosteroids at all. Instead, they are actually due to the trash hormone DHT. Yes, DHT is a trash hormone that causes acne, enlarged prostate, hair loss, and it can even cause cardiovascular problems which shorten our lifespan, and I made a video about that if you want to learn more about that. But for now, let's go balls deep and find out why the trash hormone DHT doesn't just harm our hair and our hearts, but it also damages our brain. And let's go ahead and find out how using 5-air inhibitors can protect our mind and body from this debilitating trash hormone. Well. Let's first start with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a common neurological disease that causes uncontrollable shaking and tremors. Probably the most famous person with the disease is Michael J. Fox. Ultimately, Parkinson's disease is due to a degeneration of a certain kind of nerve cell in the brain that produces the neurotransmitter called dopamine. It turns out men are much more likely to get Parkinson's disease than women are, so researchers have suspected that Parkinson's disease might have something to do with androgens. So that brings us to this study right here, titled, quote, Androgens induce dopaminergenic neurotoxicity via caspase 3 dependent activation of protein kinase C delta, unquote. Now, this is a very complicated basic research study, but what the researchers did here was take cell cultures of the neurons that could be affected by Parkinson's disease, and they added testosterone or DHT to see what would happen to them. They also added flutamide, which is a very powerful androgen receptor blocker. And what the researchers found out was that both testosterone and DHT cause apoptosis, which means cellular death, in the cultured dopamine neurons. This figure here shows that both testosterone and DHT increase apoptosis, or cell death, and the effect was blocked by flutamide, which blocks the androgen receptor. So, these investigators went on to do other experiments that worked out the precise biochemical pathway that caused destruction of these important neurons. But that's not as important as the fact that androgens make Parkinson's disease worse, and that's why men have it more often than women do. The result of the study suggests that androgen blockers might be used as a treatment for Parkinson's disease, but direct androgen blockers like flutamide aren't exactly viable treatment for men unless they want to transition since they have a lot of feminizing side effects. Well, one thing we know about DHT is that it is about 10 times more potent than testosterone in activating androgen receptors. So could it be that a 5 error blocker might be enough to make a difference by lowering DHT and therefore help people with Parkinson's disease? Well, the research is still preliminary, but in a mouse model of Parkinson's disease, it was found that dutasteride, but not finasteride interestingly enough, prevented the degeneration of the dopamine neurons that causes Parkinson's disease. Like I talked about in the last video about drug dosing and rodent studies, the investigators used a high dose of both dutasteride and finasteride, up to 12.5 milligrams per kilogram. But the investigators were puzzled as to why dutasteride worked and finasteride didn't. You might think that it was because dutasteride blocks a type 1 5 air isoenzyme and finasteride blocks the type 2 isoenzyme, and since the brain contains more of the type 1 isoenzyme, then dutasteride would work better in the brain. But if you remember from my last video, finasteride in mice has different effects than in humans because it actually blocks the type 1 isoenzyme as much as the type 2 isoenzyme in rodents. So, 
In this study, the effects of dutasteride and finasteride on serum testosterone were about the same. Both drugs increase serum testosterone because if you block the conversion of testosterone into DHT, you end up with more testosterone. Both drugs decrease serum DHT as expected, though dutasteride really wiped out the DHT as you can see here. So actually this difference in the outcomes may have just been due to dutasteride's more potent effect on suppressing DHT, since we know that dutasteride suppresses more DHT than finasteride in general. Not just because of its effects on the type 1 isoenzyme, but also because it is about three times more potent in blocking the type 2 enzyme than finasteride is. Now, before you write off finasteride as a treatment for Parkinson's disease and then joining the dutasteride master race, there is in fact another study, this time in rats with Parkinson's disease, that actually showed finasteride as being helpful. This study showed that finasteride reduced movement disorders in these rats, particularly at the very high dose of 60 milligrams per kilogram. The investigators weren't sure exactly how finasteride helped, whether it was an effect on DHT or neurosteroids, but they concluded, quote, 5-AR appears a feasible target in Parkinson's disease patients and clinical investigation to address its effects on dyskinesia, meaning movement disorder, are warranted, unquote. But these are just rodent studies, of course. Do they translate into benefits for humans with Parkinson's disease? Well, we don't know yet. On the Michael J. Fox website, there is a lot of information on Parkinson's disease, and on the site, there is a report of a study going on in Italy currently that is investigating using finasteride to treat Parkinson's disease. So this is really cutting-edge research that shows that 5-AR inhibitors may have very potent neuroprotective properties, and it would be great if it turns out that fighting Parkinson's disease becomes yet another indication for using finasteride besides its uses in treating hair loss and benign prostatic hypertrophy already, which it of course already does extremely well. And that's not even the end of it. It may seem paradoxical, but 5-AR blockers might help not just in diseases with low levels of dopamine like Parkinson's disease, but also in diseases with high levels of dopamine like schizophrenia and Tourette syndrome. Now, Tourette syndrome, by the way, what that is, that's when people have uncontrollable movements and sometimes they burst out into curse words uncontrollably. You know, similar to what would happen if you walked into a Walmart in Alabama wearing a mask. But in this article here, the authors note that just like with Parkinson's disease, there is a male predominance of schizophrenia, and thus sex hormones may be involved in some of the features of schizophrenia. Blocking the 5-AR enzyme increases precursors to te testosterone, like DHEA, and reduces DHT, as well as increasing estrogen slightly. And all these effects of blocking the 5-AR enzyme, as well as other potential effects on decreasing elevated neurosteroids, Steroids might have a beneficial effect on psychosis. To further reinforce this idea, in this article we have a 36-year-old man with schizophrenia who was given 5 milligrams per day of finasteride and his psychotic symptoms improve. This is just a case report, but this does suggest that finasteride might be useful in this condition as schizophrenia isn't something that is easily treated. Similarly with Tourette syndrome, there is a sex predominance with the syndrome affecting men much more than it affects women. So this is yet another androgen-mediated psychiatric condition, and like with schizophrenia, there is excessive dopamine in the brain. In the article, a male patient with Tourette syndrome was given finasteride at 5 milligrams per day with improvement in his symptoms being noted. When he was taken off finasteride, his symptoms recurred. Once again, this is just a case report, but it does suggest that finasteride might be useful for treating Tourette syndrome. In fact, in another case report, the authors looked at the severity of facial tics with finasteride. So in case you don't know what facial tics are, what they are are basically involved voluntary movements, and in this case report, they happen to occur in a 34-year-old man who had Tourette syndrome for 25 years. As you can see here, his facial tic severity decreased with finasteride usage, but then increased when he stopped it briefly. So this is pretty good evidence so far that androgens affect Tourette syndrome. In fact, other studies show that androgen receptor blockers also work for Tourette syndrome, but they have lots of side effects. And why block all of your androgens if you can get similar benefits from just blocking the trash hormone DHT while keeping the alpha chad hormone? hormone testosterone intact. Beyond these case reports, though, there is also a study of 10 subjects with Tourette syndrome who were placed on finasteride at 5 milligrams per day for 18 weeks. All parameters of their movement disorder improved during the treatment period, as you can see in these graphs right here. 
So it looks like 5AR blockers might be beneficial not only for Parkinson's disease, which is characterized by the destruction of dopaminergenic neurons, but 5AR blockers are also beneficial in conditions where there are high levels of dopamine, like schizophrenia and Tourette syndrome. These conditions seem to be in part antigen-related, and so reducing the trash hormone DHT by blocking the 5AR enzyme does seem to help. It turns out there are other neurologic conditions like PMS or premenstrual syndrome, substance addiction, and even brain tumors where 5AR blockers have been shown to be helpful, but to keep these videos digestible, I'll upload a video on that subject in a few days, and that will be part three of this new series on the neurological benefits of 5-air inhibitors. So until then, I'll see you all soon. God bless.